Holding small parts for drilling can sometimes be a problem and the vice isn't always the answer. So this is where the finger plate comes into its own. The finger plate is essentially a small clamping device and consists of the main plate upon which you place the work, the finger that holds the work and then the knurled nut and jack screw that tighten the finger down onto the work to secure it to the plate. There's a V groove in one side of the plate with a drill guide and a drill bushing that allows you to cross drill bar stock and also some recesses cut into three sides of the plate to allow you to through drill flat stock. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I made this and also how to use it. I bought this as a kit from Hemingway Kits and it comes with all the bar stock you need as well as the hardware and also a nice set of plans and some build notes. We're gonna start off by making the base and we're gonna use this piece of mild steel that came with the kit. Now the stock is rough sawn on the, on the end, so I'm gonna clean that up here with a four flute carbide end mill. And after that, I'm gonna square up the rest of the stock with a fly cutter. Now you could use an end mill for this. Uh, you could even draw file it in the vise if you wanted to, but I find that in these kind of situations with large sort of flat stock, uh, a fly cutter works really well and leaves a nice surface finish. Between each of the operations, I'm just uh, cleaning up the edges with a file just to make sure that I remove any burrs and keep things nice and square in the vise. And next I'm going to drill and tap an M5 hole in the side of the base so that I can bolt on the drill guide that holds the drill bushing. I'm starting the uh, thread here with a spiral flute tap with the mill um, and then I'm disengaging the mill and finishing it off by hand. The um, reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to break the tap in the hole. Um, the nice thing about these spiral flute taps, by the way, is that they force the chips out of the back of the hole, as you can see, which when um, tapping a blind hole like this is, is really nice because you don't get the chips packing up in the bottom of the hole. I'm using the uh, edge finder here to find the centre of the workpiece so that I can drill and tap for the central post, which holds the finger assembly in the knurled nut. Now I'm going to use a um, quarter 40 tap on this. And again, I'm putting it in with the mill and finishing off by hand just to keep the threads square to the hole. The next job is to create the um, drill guide itself, which is made out of three quarter inch mild steel bar. Um, and I'm just cleaning up the end here with an end mill just to square it off and then bringing it down to final size. Now that I've got this part to length, I'm gonna mill away most of this material to create two steps. Um, one to allow um, round stock to pass underneath it for drilling, and the other step is to register on the back face of the base. I've got a bit of a problem here in that this end mill is uh, quite dull. So um, yeah, it's creating quite a ragged edge on, the, on, that, um, on that final cut there. I'll have to clean that up with a file. Off camera I drilled um, a hole for the M5 screw to mount it to the base plate and what I'm doing here is just edge finding and setting the DRO up so I can locate the uh, through hole that we need to put into the drill bracket that will hold the drill bushing. I'm putting a 3 8 hole in this drill guide and I'm going to continue drilling all the way through and into the base plate. That hole in the base plate is going to give us a location for the groove that's going to be cut in the next sequence. Um, I'm going to follow up here with a reamer just to uh, give the uh, drill bushing that we'll make later uh, a, good, a good seat and also with the chamfer tool. So that's the drill guide finished for now and what I'm going to do now is remove it so that we can uh, continue to drill that hole in the base plate all the way through. I've locked the x-axis in the mill and I've installed a four millimeter slot drill here and we're going to mill a slot directly in line with that through hole that we put in the base earlier. This, once we've cut the groove, will allow us to get our stock centered directly on that hole and on the drill bushing above it so that we get perfectly on center holes. The plans actually call for a 332nd slot drill, but I don't have any imperial slot drills, so I used a four millimeter here. Um, it's slightly larger, but um, it's not gonna make any difference. These, this dimension here isn't critical. The only important thing is that we get this directly in line with the hole that we've drilled in the base plate and, and also the, the guide bushing. I've swapped out the slot drill for a 45 degree chamfer mill and I've unlocked the x-axis in the machine. Uh, I, I do have the position of that slot in the DRO, so what I'm doing is I'm moving left and right by equal amounts to cut the, uh, the two sides of the, uh, of the V-groove there. That seems to have come out okay, and as you can see, that hole is directly uh, centered on that, on that groove. So that should give us positional accuracy when we're, we're cross-drilling stock in this fixture. The final operation on the, the base plate here is to mill these recesses into three of the sides. This gives the drill clearance um, that we need uh, in order to drill right through flat stock when it's clamped to the finger plate. 
Next up, we're going to be making the finger. So we start off with um, some mild steel bar stock and we're just cleaning the end up here. Uh, the next operation is to mill a six millimeter slot in the middle of the finger. What this does is it accommodates the central post and um, allows for a little bit of forward and backward adjustment of the finger to allow for different size work pieces to be clamped. I'm also putting an open-ended slot in the end of the finger to allow for drill clearance when we're through drilling small flat parts. We're going to need some holes to accommodate the jack screw. Um, I'm going to drill and tap these for quarter 40, which give us, gives us a nice uh, fine adjustment. And we're going to put a hole either side of the slot to allow us to flip the uh, finger end for end and use either end to clamp the work. We're going to need to put these flats on either end of the finger and um, I didn't want to mess it up so I went to the trouble of laying it out. Now on this one end we've got an angle of about 15 degrees and on the other end we've got an angle of about 7 degrees. And it's not really clear from this diagram but um, on each end of the uh, finger we've got quite a large chamfer. So really the, the, the question is how do we cut these angles in a repeatable fashion? Um, now you could use something like a sign bar um, but in this instance I've decided to use angle blocks. These are pretty cool, they come in a set, a um, number of different angles. You can also add them together, so you could use a 2 and a 5 for instance to get a 7 degrees, which I'll be using on, on, the, uh, on the next cut. But um, I'm just setting up for the 15 degree uh, angle here, and uh, I'm using the parallel in the back of the vise, uh, the angle block on, on, the, uh, on the top of the parallel, and then the workpiece on top of that, and then I just pinch the vise closed, and that should give us um, a nice parallel cut across the uh, top of the workpiece. Just touching off on the top there and I'm going to mill down to the line, uh, noting the um, depth on the DRO so that I can uh, flip the part over and repeat to exactly the same depth and hopefully have exactly the same length of cut and angle. So now on to the, uh, the other angle, 7 degrees, as I said you can, uh, you can add these angle blocks together so I'm using the 2 and the 5 degrees here to get 7 degrees. And I go on to cut the other side in exactly the same way as the first side. And using the same process, I go on to cut the chamfers on the ends of the finger. So that's the finger finished. Uh, all I need to do now is uh, break those edges, uh, do a little bit of deburring, clean it up a little bit, and um, maybe uh, rub it on some sandpaper to get a nice brushed finish. Over to the lathe now to make the central post which holds the whole assembly together. This end, or well, the main body of the, uh, the post is tapped M6 to accept a knurled nut which clamps the assembly together and the other end is turned quarter inch to accept a quarter 40 die um, which is the same thread as, um, as the hole in the base. I'm going to be using my shop made uh, tail stock die holder here. Um, this one takes imperial dies and um, I've had a few viewers comment on it so uh, what I'll do in a future video is to make an, uh, a metric version uh, and I'll do that on camera so um, if you're interested please hit the subscribe button uh, so you don't miss out. I'm moving on to making the jack screw now and I'm going to make the, uh, the knob for the jack screw and the um, shaft separately. Now the plans call for a 7 8 uh, jack screw knob but um, I want to make mine a little bit bigger to give me a bit more leverage and I'm going to make this out of brass because I think it looks a bit better. So I've just faced and cleaned up the end of this inch and a quarter bar stock here and I'm going to move on to knurling next. Now this knurling tool is uh, its a cheap Chinese one, it's knackered and I don't get a very good finish with it so in a future video I am going to be uh, making a new one from scratch. I'm going to be drilling and tapping this uh, M6 to receive the main shaft of the jack screw. I want quite a decent chamfer on this because I think it will look good. Um, so I've, I've chamfered one edge there and I'm now coming in with the parting tool to start the parting operation. I'll go in um, a little way and then I'm going to back out and come back in with the chamfer tool to chamfer that back edge. So now I've finished that part, I think it's turned out too thick, I think it's too chunky, uh, I think it's going to be out of proportion with the rest of the uh, mechanism, so uh, what I'm going to do now is just um, it's just thin it down. Now I, did want, I didn't want the, uh, the post to show through the top of the uh, knob, but um, I had to drill quite deep in order to get the tap in there, so what I'm doing here is um, I'm just thinning that down level, uh, level with the top of the post, and I'm going to come back in here and, and, and chamfer, the, uh, chamfer the top. 
Off camera, I made this shaft for the jack screw. It's threaded quarter 40 down the body and M6 on the top for the uh, for the cap. And it's also got a little copper rivet in the bottom there to stop it marking the base plate. Back over to the mill now to create one of the final parts, and this is the rocker plate. Now this sits in between the finger and the knurled nut that clamps them all down. And it's quite an interesting part in that it's got um, a, a profile, a filed profile on one side of it that allows it to sit at different angles. Um, and this gives a secure kind of clamping force um, when the, the finger plate is, is, is not quite parallel with the, uh, the rest of the assembly. I've already put the uh, hole in the, in the center there so the rocker plate can slide onto the uh, main shaft. Um, and what I'm doing now is putting in some relief cuts to give some um, clearance for the jack screw. I'm cutting a slot on either side of what will be the profiled section and this will give us clearance on the sides of the finger and allow the rocker plate to settle at different angles uh, so that the knurled nut can uh, clamp down securely when the finger is at um, an acute angle. And the final operation in the mill for this part is to bring it to length. So that came out pretty well and the uh, next operation is to file that um, central section to a convex profile. I'm finishing up with the, uh, this rocking motion on the file here and I've found that this is the best way to get a consistent radius across a part like this. The final part we're going to make before assembly is the uh, drill bushing. Now I've just turned this out of sealed steel or drill rod, a uh, simple turning job, a uh, hole in the middle uh, with a big chamfer. So it's time now for a final assembly. I ended up giving most of the parts a brushed finish in the end. I wasn't too happy with the finish that I got on the uh, with the uh, fly cutter and it got a little beaten up while I was uh, doing the machining anyway. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, just bolting on the um, the drill guide followed by the uh, the finger itself, the rocker plate, um, the knurled nut which I made off camera, a simple turning job that was, and uh, followed up by the um, by the jack screw. And finally the uh, drill bushing. So that's the finger plate complete but um, before I show you uh, how to use it um, there's one more job that we need to do and that's to harden that drill bushing. Now the drill bushing is made out of um, silver steel or, or drill rod which means it's tool steel uh, which means that you can harden it and the way you do this is you heat it up with a heat source to its cherry, till it's cherry red and then you quench it in oil. So what I'm doing here is I'm firing up the uh, oxyacetylene torch and I'm going to do just that. Now the best way to test this in the absence of a hardness tester um, is to um, simply run a file across the uh, across the part. If it skates across the part without actually digging in, you know you've got a hard part. So we're finally ready to test the finger plate. So I'm just going to start this first test with a little piece of scrap. Um, it's important to get the um, get the hole lined up over that uh, recess in the plate, just so that the uh, when the drill passes through it doesn't foul the plate itself. So I'm just going to put some parallels in the vise here just to uh, support the uh, finger plate and then put the finger plate itself into the vise and, and just nip it up. And the final thing I'm going to show you today is how to cross drill small bar stock uh, using the finger plate. 
and um, what I'm doing here is I'm just loosening off that thumb screw a little bit, just gives a little bit more height on the uh, on the finger there. That acts as a lever there, you see. Um, and then I'm tightening up the jack screw to clamp the actual part. Just setting up here and I'm uh, checking clearances and you can see that drill chuck is going to interfere with that knurled knob. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen that off and reposition it, move it back slightly um, and retighten it. And now you can see that we've got sufficient clearance. Now you can make these drill bushings in different sizes, obviously. Uh, this one is the tap drill size for an M3 uh, bolt. But um, what the other thing you can do is you can just use a smaller drill bushing and um, and use that as a pilot and then come back in, take the drill bushing out and come back in with a bigger drill. That would also work. And that's given us a nice clean hole perfectly in the center of the bar. So that was a really fun little project. If you want to make one of these yourself, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can buy the kit from. Now I'm going to have a number of these uh, tool making projects coming up on the channel shortly. So if you're interested in that, then please do stay tuned. Thanks a lot for watching folks. It really is appreciated.